As I've said before, I believe Matthew is meant for the Jews, Mark for the lukewarm, and possibly also the left behind. And I'll get into that in a reason here in a minute. And Luke for the bride of Christ. Please hear me. Starting in verse 6, or verse 36, everyone's favorite scripture to quote, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only, which I believe is a Hebrew idiom for Feast of Trumpets. But as of the days of Noah were, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. Noah entered the ark seven days before the flood came. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also be the coming of the Son of Man. I believe that's speaking of the rapture. Then shall two be in the field. One shall be taken, the other one left. Then two women will be grinding in the mill. One shall be taken, the other one left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. This again, I believe, is referring to the Jews. And here's why. Women grinding in the mill references the harvest time. How do I know it references the harvest time? Because as of the days and the hours that knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only, is referring to the Hebrew idiom, Feast of Trumpets. Go down a little bit further, keep reading. Starting in verse 45 through 46. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom the Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat and due season. Friends, this is meat right here. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. There will be Jews with us in heaven, messianic Jews. So it makes sense for this scripture to be for them. Two women will be grinding in the mill. One should be taken, the other one left. Two men in the field. One will be taken, the other one left, and so forth. And it's not on the Sabbath day. Notice they're working. That's interesting. Let's go on to Mark's gospel, see what he has to say. Mark speaks of, a, of the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet of Daniel. Matthew speaks that very thing. Matthew was speaking to the Jews. Mark here is referring to those that are left behind. I'm sorry, but you've been warned. Notice also in Matthew when it speaks of the abomination of desolation, it says, pray that your flight not be in the winter nor on a Sabbath. But here in Mark's gospel in verse 18 of 13, it says, and pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. It doesn't mention a Sabbath because we don't look at those days the way the Jews do. Verse 23 in Mark chapter 13, but take heed. Behold, I have foretold you all of these things. But in those days after the tribulation, the sun shall be dark and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. And then shall, his, shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost parts of the earth to the uttermost parts of heaven. Then he goes on about the parable of the fig tree, which we know is the generation that won't pass away, which is, I believe, our generation. I believe it's referring here to those that will be left behind that will become children of God. Then he goes on to say four times for them to watch. Verse 36, Sleep's coming suddenly, he finds you sleeping. Not prepared. And notice verse 32 again, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. They weren't looking for the feast. They weren't looking for these holy days. We are. Luke's gospel speaks this way, starting in verse 20. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh, means it will be destroyed. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountaintops. Let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written must be fulfilled. Woe unto them that give suck in that day, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. Then it goes on to speak about the time of the Gentiles. And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars with, 
upon the earth, distress of nation, which is currently happening, with perplexity in the seas and the waves roaring, men's heart failing them for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. But verse 28 is our hope. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your head, for your redemption draweth nigh. Then it goes into the parable of the fig tree, which we know again that we are. But it never mentions that, it never brings up this phrase that's so important for us to understand. But no man knows the day or the hour. Not the angels, not the sun, but my father only. Because maybe, just maybe, please hear me, maybe, just maybe, the Holy Spirit, Holy Father, was going to reveal this to his bride. And his bride was meant to warn the people. Verse 34, Take heed to yourselves, lest any time your heart should be overcharged with sufficiency and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come upon all of them that dwell on the face of the earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all of these things. That shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Read your scriptures and notice the differences there. It's very important. I love each and every one of you. Could it be the Feast of Trumpets? I believe in all my spirit that it is. Will it be this Feast of Trumpets? I pray with all my spirit that it is. Could it be another one? Absolutely it can. But guys, it, it has to be. Because those are the seven feasts that God saw fit to fit perfectly into Scripture in this way. Rosh Kadesh, I believe is how you pronounce that, speaking of the sighting of the new moon for the new month. Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year, is the, one of the seven feasts that God saw as very important for a reason. He calls it out as important for a reason. October 2nd through the 4th, I won't be on my phone. I'll be spending time with my family. I'll be working for the second. And on the third and the fourth, I'm taking those days off. I'm not putting my faith in a damn day. Do you understand? Ephesians 4.29 for those that need that reference. I'm putting my faith and my hope in Jesus Christ. Because his bride longs to be with him. And we see the signs and we hear the warnings and we're trying to tell his people. Jesus was the perfect Passover. He perfectly fulfilled unleavened bread that evening. Jews celebrate evening from evening as a day. He fulfilled first fruits to perfection. The first full big time rapture. There's nothing new under the sun, friends. If you dig in scripture, you'll find it. The day of Pentecost, the day the church began to perfection on the day why would he not continue to do the same for us I love you I guess this video went a little longer than I planned but here we go this is your message for today could I be wrong absolutely I can be the father sees my heart and he sees that I'm trying and that I'm looking for that blessed hope and that comfort. And I don't put my hope in a day because I tried that back in 2017 and I was miserably mistaken. And guess what? I've learned so much since then and I've learned to lean so much more on him. The falling away has nothing to do with his people that are truly in his word and seeking his face. Because we just want to see his face. Show us your face, Heavenly Father.